Every year, natural disasters affect regions all over the world. These disasters strike as if a mysterious force slammed down its fist, and once everything landed back down from that exerted force, nothing is its an original state. People are confused due to shock and injuries. The people of these regions are the most affected by natural disasters. According to the Pan American Development Foundation, people's homes are shaken and torn apart annually. Be they floods, earthquakes, or tsunamis, natural disasters are life-altering and unpredictable. The first to respond to the scene are local law enforcement, firefighters, and EMTs. They respond to the emergencies and help to reinstate organization by providing clean water, basic medical care, information about resources, even directing traffic. They make sure that aid is accessible. Coordination is key. No matter how prepared, there will be chaos. Therefore, the following tasks need to be agreed upon immediately. To compose a plan of action and management of dead bodies, creating groups and people in charge, to remain informed and gain communication with the outside, including with media, logistical help for military, and liaison with diplomatic missions in with intergovernmental and international organizations. This includes the United Nations, World Health Organization, and the Red Cross, as well as identifying resources, such as forensic teams, and passing on accurate information to families and communities regarding identification of the missing and management of dead bodies. Triage systems are a method devised to ration medical care. It looks at, at ethics and develops a tier of who receives what medical attention and in what order. This system is a way to categorize victims and disperse available resources. Due to the number of victims affected in natural disasters, a system of organized rations is vital. Developed in the military, triage systems were meant to function in day-to-day -day care process within a healthcare facility. Yet, in a situation where the victim count is much higher, the system is modified to fit the needs ethically in response to urgency. Those who can hang on will most likely be seen, as opposed to those with severe medical needs including needing blood transfusion. The goal of disaster triage is to get everyone accounted for and at least tagged with the level of severity then transported to the appropriate care. Triage tags designate the state of survival for a body. If a body is deemed untreatable or needs critical care at a time where there are very limited resources, they are black tagged or labeled deceased. Let's say you're a physician with two patients that both require oxygen, which is in limited supply. Your first patient is diagnosed with end-stage tuberculosis, and the other has asthma. Who will receive the oxygen? What does your code of ethics say? The ethical solution is to supply oxygen for the patient with a reversible condition of asthma. As soon as the victim is diagnosed with end-stage tuberculosis, they are black tagged. Since this patient is less likely to survive and is contagious, they receive less medical attention. Unfortunately, victims of natural disaster are seen under triage immediately, and it is the common process of sorting in these situations, especially when resources are scarce. At the end of the day, we want a higher survivor rate. As soon as medical tents are available, victims are sorted into levels of attention. There are the walking wounded, they are those who are not in need of critical care and are later transferred to different facilities post high trauma cases. Though all victims in disaster relief deserve medical care, disaster triage calls for those who, less, who need less medical attention a priority over high trauma cases. According to an article by Kathleen Gill, the most seriously injured are left to the end and are likely to be left untreated. Those who can be saved can be cared for. According to Gale, this mentality is justified by utilitarian rule, meaning it, it is in the region's best interest that the scarce resources be dispersed among those who need, who need to be less monitored. Those who need more medical attention are unfortunately spoken for and black tagged or tagged appropriately. Initially, we touched on responsibilities for dead body management. 
mass casualties have specific procedures to follow through with in order to maintain safety of infections and allow forensics to lean in for identification. Why focus on the untreatable and the deceased? Safety is a main concern for the region and the survivors around the bodies as well as those managing the bodies. These bodies carry pathogens, thus a widespread fear for an epidemic need for an epidemic needs to be cleared up. It is important to be informed who is in charge of recovery, management, as well as who do we contact if we're missing somebody. And accurate information is critical. It is out of respect and it can add to stress. We need to maintain a strict organization. Important information to know regarding the mass casualties in the local area is that they are not infectious. This is a myth. Manner of death most common at a natural disaster site are on a physical level, including severe injuries, drowning, or fire. Although they do carry pathogens and may leak feces in postmortem state, they are incapable of fostering infections or infectious organisms for more than 48 hours. You are at a higher risk for illnesses when handling bodies. And if they are not disposed of responsibly, there is a risk of water contamination. Families suffer when loved ones are unreachable and information is unavailable. In the case that loved ones are deceased, there are causes for delay in identification. When bodies remain unidentified, they are collected as is unavoidable in a disaster situation. And because cremation for a large number of bodies is expensive, a communal burial site is practiced. Temporary graves are necessary to keep bodies on a low temperature. Information is very abundant whether it is received and is accurate is a hopeful thought at these sites. Information regarding missing persons may not be reported nor recorded for many reasons, be it the family has yet to reach a person in charge. Whatever the case, there is something to be done with all the dead bodies. A communal burial site is likely to happen and if so, the bodies are labeled and located away from any water supply to avoid contamination. These bodies await in the cool earth until they can be identified. Bodies also remain without their cultural burial sites performed. At times, bodies' rights are violated depending on the religion and cultural values of the deceased. Practices such as communal burial and even autopsies are problematic as they go against their cultural practices. Organization attempts to meet folks halfway by labeling extensively and wanting to repatriate bodies to the homes and families. But when that doesn't happen, the state reconsiders them as missing persons. This means that the state denies family the fate and whereabouts of their loved ones. This places a big ethical dilemma on behalf of the families, causing more grief and suffering without closure. If ethics are meant to hold a standard, are these legal issues fair? If they leave families in suffering and their cultural values are ignored, is a communal burial really a last resort?